gosh, really? <laughs> up with water so we're just gonna pour in 10 cups of water warm water warm water yeah so all the way across the top. Okay. Sam has used these before he swears by them and he's an awesome gardener so he's he's the only reason I get a great tomato harvest every year <laughs> taught me how to do tomatoes take them about 15-20 minutes and these little pea cups will start swelling up as they absorb all of the water and whatever water does not get absorbed will pour off and so it'll take it'll take a few minutes for these things to, to do their thing okay so in the meantime we need to get some cinder blocks down here so that they'll be lifted up off of the cold floor and closer to the light, but the, our floor is cement, so it's very cold. So instead of heat mats, we're gonna lift them up onto cinder blocks. So we have to go get those. <laughs> so after the little pellets have swelled, you just open them up a little bit. Just open up the net. You can kind of fluff some of this peat that's off in there. Don't have to really worry about doing it too much because they're already pretty loose as it is. Yeah, just some of them are tighter than others. You're just basically opening it up enough so that you can get some seed off into these things. That's pretty cool. I just made a label with duct tape and the Sharpie marker. Now we're doing Black, I think you would say black vernissage, which Baker's Creek sent me free. So I'm going to give them a try. So thanks, Baker Creek. That's awesome. Free seeds with my order. I love that. The variety I'm using this year, I'm trying out my heirloom variety. Like I said before, I always get my big harvest of, air, of um, hybrid tomatoes. So I use hybrids because verticillium wilt and all the other diseases usually get my heirlooms. So, but this year I always try an heirloom to see if it does amount to something in this area. So we're doing Porter Improved for heirloom and Homestead 24 and this Black Vernissage. I hope I'm saying that right, Vernissage, I'm not sure. But anyway, so that's what we've got going so far. Got one flat planted out. Where are all my labels? So, tomatoes, peppers, spinach, kale, different types of kale, and lettuce. You were right. It's under there good. Perfect. Woohoo! There's one flat. Here goes the second one. 
So when kids are involved, um, you need things to go kind of more streamlined, be more exciting and quicker. So we set ourselves up for success, I think. We label them all ahead of time. And we have the seeds right here. So I think that'll go smoothly with them. So let me invite them in. And then I want them, I want my kids to know how to start seeds and um, how to start their own garden. So here we go, we'll go get them. Make a little hole with your chopstick, right? Like that. Oh, I've got them all labeled. So we're gonna do some flowers here, these pretty calendula flowers for a healing ornament. But first we're gonna do two ghost peppers that my nephew gave me. Thanks, Cash, we'll see. It was a long time ago he gave them to me, so we'll see if they come to fruition. Right there, those two right there. Just drop one in the little hole that I made. Perfect. And then we'll just cut, tuck them in and cover them up with some, with a toothpick. Just one in each? Yeah. Okay. They, they're gonna be so tiny that if you get more than one, that's okay. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Ava, hold out your hand. Teeny. Are these ones gonna be teeny? Here, you probably wanna put it in Wait, this where? hand. Oh my gosh, so gonna put it in that hand. These are kind of weird shaped, aren't they? How many, These are calendula how many flowers. in each hole? Just uh, one in each hole. Let me make, I made holes these ones. So let me make some holes for these ones. I need to make it kind of big for that weird looking seed. That's a bigger hole, don't I? Make it like this. There we go, just enough room for that seed. So I'm doing my yellow squash a little early and my tomatoes and peppers a little late. So hopefully it'll all work out. <laughs> it'll all come out in the wash. There we go. We're done with the second part. Okay, got my seeds planted. I'm so excited. A lot of exciting things happening today. But my friend Sam was not really pleased with the bulbs that I got. So, I am going to take these bulbs back and go ahead and exchange them for a grow light bulb. He was really not happy with the fluorescent. He said, just won't give them what they need to get strong. So I'm gonna go to the store and get two grow light bulbs. So again, we're taking bulbs back, I don't know. Anyway, so we're gonna do that and then there is something else exciting happening today. Hang on, I'll show you. All right, something exciting is going on with my chickens. All right, here are all my girls. But there's someone missing. Guess where she is? There she is. There's Dottie. She has gone broody. Which means she really wants to set a clutch of eggs. So, we don't have a rooster anymore. So, we're gonna travel to a friend's house and they're gonna trade eggs, my unfertilized eggs for her fertilized eggs, and we're gonna set them under Dottie and see if we can get some spring chicks. So that is very exciting. Let me see if there are any eggs under her. Oh yeah. Three eggs under her. Look that. She's probably like, what, I'm hatching those. No Dottie, you're not because they're not fertilized. But, I'm gonna give you some fertilized ones. I am. So I set up another place for them to lay right there. So, some of them are laying there, some of them are not. So, I'm hoping they'll get accustomed to that and they'll leave Dottie alone. Oh, somebody's coming to lay there. That's good. Go ahead. Hey girl, 
They're all curious about the new nest box. All right, so let me take these eggs to my friend and come back with some fertilized eggs to stick under Dottie and hopefully we'll have some chicks. What a miracle that'll be for the city gal. Okay, see you in a bit. We've got our fertilized eggs and put a little dot on them so that we would be able to tell the difference between our eggs and the fertilized eggs in case some of our eggs get under Dottie too. Okay, so we're gonna go put them out there, stick oh. them under Dottie. These are big eggs, man. They're all gonna fit under there? <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be fitting on a whole bunch. Lots of eggs. <laughs> You've hit the gold mine. <laughs> okay, last one. Okay. Thanks, Dottie. Now, I thought that she could kind of raise the chicks herself, but my friend said, no, you gotta get them out of there when they hatch and put them in protection because the other chickens will get them. So 21 days, they should hatch. So we'll keep a lookout. We'll put it on our calendar. We'll keep a lookout for that 21 day mark and see if we can get some spring chicks. That's exciting. Then we'll take them inside and put them under a, a light, a warming light. All right. Fun day, lots of exciting things happening today. Planted seeds, maybe have chicks. <laughs> Bye from Bloom Where You Planted. All right, we're gonna put a little dot, a Sharpie marker dot on the end of these so that if our chickens somehow lay eggs, you know, we don't wanna get them confused with our unfertilized eggs and these fertilized eggs. Oh my gosh, really? Stinking, <laughs> <laughs> <Eating>, huh? <laughs>